Hey everybody, welcome back to Title Tuesdays. My name is Kevin Tatcha, the founder and CEO of Independence Title, and we welcome you to another wonderful how-to episode. But as always, in order to receive our messages and these videos that are filled with so much education, you need to subscribe below. You see the little red button that says subscribe? You need to click that button. So take a second, click the button below so you can get notified of our next show. Did you click it? All right, well, wait a minute. All right, thanks. Looks like you clicked the button. So now you're gonna get next week's episode. This week, we just got done filming an amazing event which was talking about overcoming obstacles when it comes to divorce and how it affects the sale of a home when it comes to real estate. And we had a ton of listing agents in the room that had so many questions. We brought in one of our divorce attorneys from uh, Todd Wise from Wise Lieberman, and he was able to educate a lot of our realtors on some of the obstacles that we see from the legal perspective when it comes to working with uh, divorce situations. And as we always know, Divorce is, is a traumatic time, just as we've talked about short sales and foreclosures, and divorce is a traumatic time. Typically, you're going to be bringing in two parties that are usually not going to be in agreement. Maybe one party's living in the house while the other party's paying the bills on the house. Maybe one party has the children all the time and the other party is angry that they don't. So what is your role as a real estate professional in order to make sure you maximize the situation to A, benefit the clients and make sure the buyers and sellers can come together and the closing can take place. And most importantly, you want your commission, right? You don't get paid until the closing takes place, just as us at the title company. So I want to cover a few important topics that we see when it comes from the title perspective of handling a divorced situation. And then what we'll do is we'll put the link below and we're going to show, share with you the full version of the training that we did uh, just today. It was about an hour long where we answered a lot of common questions. So number one thing to realize is in most divorce situations, the marital home is the, the seller's largest asset, the husband and the wife. This is typically the asset when they were in love that they bought, they invested their entire life savings, whatever money they had, maybe liquidated a 401k, and they were able to purchase their first home. They raised their family in this home. So your job as a real estate agent is to understand that you're not representing the wife or the husband. You are representing both parties equally and undivided. One of the mistakes that we see a lot of times is, is all of a sudden the realtor is going to come in to talk with, with the clients about listing the home and all of a sudden the, the spouse, one of the spouses, they start talking about how they just saw the realtor the other day or asking them how maybe an event was that they saw them at. It's a big mistake to mix the emotional side with the professional side. Understand that you're representing both parties. So if the husband finds out that you're friends with the wife, there's less of a chance you're gonna earn that listing because it's all about earning the opportunity to do business as a real estate professional here in South Florida. So once you've overcome the obstacle, you've gotten these parties together, what are some good tools that you can use? I know in Palm Beach County where the sellers typically select the title company to do the closing, we get a lot of referrals from divorce attorneys that are in Palm Beach County. Why? Because we can come in with the tools and we can truly sit down with the parties and explain to them what the closing process is going to be. We pre-pull a title insurance search. So we're gonna basically check the title to the property and what are some of the things we're gonna find? Maybe delinquent HOA dues, maybe a delinquent mortgage. How about that second mortgage, those HELOCs, home equity lines of credits that maybe the parties took out five or six years ago and there was never any balance and maybe the husband or wife forgot about it and now there's, guess what, a balance. So these are some of the obstacles that we're gonna see that we try and get from the beginning. I'll never forget, we had a closing about six months ago where the husband came in to sign the closing documents. The wife already pre-signed everything. The husband came in to finish up the closing and on the closing statement, he saw that there was a second mortgage and a third mortgage on there. And his question was, what are these? I, I didn't realize there were two mortgages. And this was a case where the, the wife supposedly fraudulently secured two mortgages against the property. One was for her own personal benefit and the other I believe was to bail um, her boyfriend out of jail. It was a bail bonds where she put up the house as collateral. So these are just some situations that we see that wouldn't you like to know this stuff ahead of time? So in a divorce situation, it's all about transparency. You need to be transparent in the situation. You need to be able to mediate, which means bring the buyer and the seller together in order to agree on some terms. But the first challenge you have is first getting the sellers to agree. 
So what's another good tip you can use is maybe bring in an appraiser. We did a video a few weeks back which you can look at with Claudia who talked about the appraisal process. Why not have the sellers select a, an appraiser to come in, an independent third party to give them an opinion of value? So this way you can kind of figure out where you're able to list this property. Okay, so now as we're moving forward in the process, you've now secured the listing, you, you've built that relationship and trust within the sellers and both of them. You need to communicate honestly and openly equally with both of them. Sometimes you may have to go through their attorneys, but again, it's a, it's a good idea to make sure that you're giving the same message to seller A as you are with seller B. So when we come to the closing table, there's no surprises. So as a title company, what is our role? A lot of times the marital settlement agreement, which would be the final judgment, is actually completed at the time when they're coming to the sale. So a lot of times we're gonna have to look at that, discuss it with the attorneys, and we're gonna have to interpret what the agreement was between the parties as far as who is to get paid what, what bills are to be paid off. Maybe there were some home renovations that needed to be paid off before the parties split the proceeds. Sometimes we've seen that the party living in the house pays all of these expenses and then what's left that comes out so it's an unequal share or unequal split in the proceeds. And we have to be able to navigate that through this process to make sure each seller is clear in what we're doing at the closing table so they're never going to come back in the end saying, I didn't get my fair share. So it's very, very important. We're seeing more times that people are trying to come to a closing table to sell a house without their spouse being included and then what would happen is that now causes a potential claim. So now as we start wrapping up the video, I wanna talk about some networking opportunities for you because again, at Independence Title, when we do these videos, it's all about added value for you. If I can't teach you how to successfully get a divorced situation under contract, then I haven't done my job. So where do you, how do you get these properties under contract? I'm gonna give you two really successful ways that I see a lot of listing agents getting these properties. A, they're network, networking with divorce attorneys. Divorce attorneys are a wealth of knowledge, but they do not practice real estate. They want to be able to refer a real estate listing to a real estate agent that farms a market and has a good understanding of the divorce process. So when you watch our longer video, it's going to teach you a little bit more about that divorce process, but you're going to have a better understanding and some more tools so you could be educated when you're talking with these divorce attorneys as to why they should select you to be the listing agent for the home. Remember, they're usually giving two to three different names to each party. And would it be pretty cool if you networked with both the husband's attorney and the wife's attorney, and you happen to be the common name on the list, you've now just secured yourself what we call a win. Now, second one I wanna focus on, which I think may be even a little bit more powerful, is a mediator. Divorce mediators are a very good source of business. Why? Most divorces, when we're talking not high net worth, individuals who are talking your average person most are going to settle these divorces within what we call the mediation period which means both parties are going to come together they are then going to sit in in independent rooms and the mediator with the attorneys are going to sit and talk with the seller on one side and they're going to talk with the buy, uh, the, the husband on one side and they're going to talk with the wife on the other side why is this so important because these two parties are now going to come together with what we call a mediated marital settlement agreement. And in that marital settlement agreement, it's gonna talk about listing what? Their largest asset. And these mediators are gonna come in and they're going to guide this, the husband and the wife as to what is in their best interest to maximize the most amount of profit for them. And part of that is going to be selecting you, the real estate professional, to list their next home. So again, imagine in the perfect world, you have divorce attorney A, you have divorce attorney B, and then you have the mediator. You bring these three parties together and that equals dollars in your pocket because if you are the common name on all of these uh, referral pages, you've now secured the next listing. You are now able to help navigate the obstacles of divorce pertaining to the listing of the largest marital asset, which is usually their home. So as always, I hope you really enjoyed watching today. I enjoyed telling you a little bit about the divorce process when it comes to real estate. Hopefully you'll link into our longer video, watch it, ask us any questions, and know that we are experts in the title insurance industry when it comes to navigating through the marital settlement agreement and navigating dealing 
with an irate husband and an irate wife that just cannot come to an agreement, we have to mediate the situation to make sure everyone wins in the end. So subscribe below if you didn't already, but I believe you already did, and we look forward to seeing you at the next closing table.